This is a, a, a fly that I've used for quite some time, although this stuff, this chenille, this is new. It's always been olive chenille. But it's basically, <laughs> it's a cross between a, an ugly bugger and <coughs> a Pittsford pea. And it's just a fantastic fly when the water's cold, really late in the back end or early in the new season. Just a devastating fly to be fishing with. Um, and it doesn't matter where you fish, actually, small still waters or big reservoirs. It just, it, it's an out and out fish catcher. It just <laughs> really, really, really works. Simple, no a lot to it, few materials, but what not. <coughs> it's got to cast you lots of fish, so go ahead and tie it. Start off with a, a wet fly. This is a Camazon B175 in the vise. Uh, black thread, 8 0, nothing fancy. And just come in and get some thread on a hook shank. Come down to a bit opposite the barb. And then back up because I want to create a whole body. And I've got here some black marabou, lovely long black marabou. Take a generous pinch, generous pinch. And what I like to do is I like to take the edge of it with some scissors. So, take that off. Where my thorax is going to be, that's where my, my tying in point is for the marabou tail. Now, we can have the tail as long as, as short as you want it. However, <coughs> I'm a great believer in tails that are not so long because I get tail nips. So, mine tends to be um, the first section of my finger to the tip of my finger. And I just come in and take that off there. So, you can see there, first join on my finger, uh, inch and a half, something like that, inch and a bit. No much, not much at all. So then I've got this stuff, Straggle Hackle, and it's a green holographic and olive. <coughs> it works really well on this fly. Like I say, the original was olive, the one that I fish all the time. However, this one, it adds just something a little bit special, and I like it. I like the way it works on the fly. Now it has got a very thick core, so be careful when you're tying this, you want all your frits to go one way. So what I tend to do is I catch in and I make sure my frits is sitting one way. You'll see what I mean when I start tying. I don't want it to kink and turn, otherwise the fly doesn't look good. So, when I'm tying, I'm going to pull all these fibres to the back. One turn to the back. And every turn that I take following that, which is a touch and turn, I pull the fibres back before bedding it down. Pulling the fibres back. And it just, it gives you a, a far, far better looking fly. Um, you didn't want the frits or chenille going an opposite way to what you're winding. Nearly there. One more turn, I think. And then lock with a thread wrap. Because it's a frits, and you'll hear me say this a lot in my fly time videos, I prefer to use a blade. So just come in, cut that off. And then I'm just going to tidy up with a few thread wraps here. Wet my fingers and stroke these fibres back a bit. I'm going to create a taper because I've got a bit of a bulbous thorax to get in here. I'm going to use a lot of material, so what I don't want is it too bulky. So you can see, I've created a bit of a taper. And the reason for that is because I've got quite a few materials. The first material I'm going to put in is I'm going to put some <coughs> micro chenille. This is a micro chenille made by Vineyards. And I take three of these. So I've got a length here, I'm going to cut that into three. Four's too bulky when you're tidying the head up. So one at the side. Oh, if I can pick it up. One at this side. Again, try and keep that taper. And then one in the middle. Again, keeping that taper. Or look to try and keep that taper if you can. So I've got three bits of the chenille there. And as you can see, I'm keeping that taper all the time because I'm going to put another material in there. And that's this stuff. It's basically a glow bright yellow, chartreuse, glow bright colour. <coughs> and I didn't need much of this, but what I do need to do is I need to, I use my scissors for this a lot, is just come in and take 
some of the fibers away for the core to avoid bulk just a little bit and I kind of get it off because I'm doing this video isn't that typical there you go tiny little bit of the core exposed that's all I need just a tiny bit and I can catch that in Keeping my taper and stop where I'm going to tie everything in. So if I whip finish here, it gives me enough space. I'll probably only give it three turns. So pull all my fibres back. One, two, and then come up and lock off with the thread. One, two, three, four, five. And with my blade, be careful of the thread. few more wraps here we've got to tidy all this up shortly and to tidy it up properly I always put a whip finish in <clears throat> so like I say I've got three bits of chenille here there's one there's two and there's three so that's my three bits of chenille that I need to pull up and over so take these fibers out the way make sure everything's out the way so it's just those three fibers going over the top of the hook shank like so, and then lock in. So it looks like that. Lock in. In with your blade, one at a time. One, two, three. And all we're going to do is tidy the head up. Any loose bits we can tidy up with controlled thread wraps. Like so. Anyway, yes, we're finishing tool. Let me have a blade and then just a little bit of varnish either side. And that's him. The ugly, the ugly bugger P. Um, just a great fly when the watch cold. Great for rainbows, great for brownies. I really hope you enjoyed that, folks. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. Plenty more fly tying and fishing videos on there. Thanks very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.